we're taking you on a trip back into the ancient history of Barcelona, entering the Royal Palace, and beneath it, we'll have a look at the ruins of a Roman city, bringing us 2,000 years back in time, when the city was first founded by the Roman Emperor Augustus about the year 10 BC. This spectacular site was first discovered in the 1930s and work has continued on it ever since to open it up for the public. And we'll take you into another nearby art history museum, the Mares Museum, with a great collection of Gothic sculptures and paintings, also including some Renaissance art. We'll start at the Museum of the History of the City, which features intact Roman ruins, remnants of the original Roman city that was founded here 2,000 years ago. A model shows us how it looked. You can see the wall surrounding the city and its location in the heart of Barcelona's Gothic district, the Roman town in blue outline on the map. Plaza San Jaume is the site of the Roman Forum, and underneath the Royal Palace is where we find the Roman ruins today. There was a performance in the courtyard going on when we got there. We'll show you a little bit more of that at the end. The palace began as a medieval fortress and grew into a very large structure with its tall lookout tower built in the 15th century. But it's kind of hard to find it because there's just a narrow alley leading you to it. Then you'll enter through the courtyard of a Gothic mansion and find yourself in a massive 14th century Royal Assembly Hall, one of the largest such spaces in Europe. It was in this palace, perhaps in this chamber, that Columbus brought back news of its discovery of the New World to Ferdinand and Isabella, bringing with him exotic natives, artifacts, and food. There he was granted permission and support for his second voyage. The main attraction of this Museo de Historia de Barcelona is the Roman ruins down in the basement. And they have a clever way to get you down there in this elevator that's more of a time capsule. It doesn't read out the floors, it counts down the years. You then step into the ruins of a Roman city where you'll see the streets, the wall foundations, the sewers, the laundry and winemaking factories and house sites with mosaic paved floors. With an area of some 4,000 square meters, it's one of the largest Roman sites ever found under a European city. You'll see clear evidence of the engineering skills of those ancient Romans with their use of cut stone, concrete, and mortar, creating a smooth paving of the streets and the floors inside the houses and efficient sewer systems. Houses of the wealthy upper class were amazingly luxurious and surprisingly modern in style. Scale models include that overall view of the Roman city itself that we saw earlier in the program. Romans had by far the most advanced culture in Europe at that time and brought with them the fine arts as well as the technology for making wine and for mundane activities like a laundry. A lot of thought and effort has gone into creating this museum, starting with the initial archeology span in the 30s that continued well into the 1960s and 70s, and then the reconstruction, the renovation, excellent signage, creation of galleries into a little space above it all with display cases for the artifacts and installing the walkway to easily guide you through it. Romans built many ancient cities throughout Spain to control this land, which was a valuable source of food, minerals, and trade goods. You'll also experience layers of history, for after the Romans left around the year 400 with the collapse of Rome, the Visigoths and their descendants built early medieval walls on top of these ruins, leaving signs of early Christian life. Exiting the museum, you'll pass by the courtyard of another noble mansion, which is part of the Royal Archives, containing documents going back to the 14th century. On your way to the Museum of Frederick Marez on the cathedral side, just around the corner from the Royal Palace, or at least walk into its magnificent patio courtyard surrounded by a loggia arcade. There's no admission charge to come into the courtyard and enjoy it. You could even sit down by the fountain, join the local families, take a break. It's kind of like a quiet oasis in the middle of the Gothic Quarter. And there's also a cafe that's open to the public. 
Although the center of the Gothic Quarter does not have open parks, there are a number of little plazas and some lovely courtyards like this, which also has free Wi-Fi. There's a small admission charge, but you can get in free on Sundays after 3 p.m. and all day the first Sunday of the month and certain holidays. This private museum contains religious sculpture from the Romanesque through the Renaissance, along with household items from the late 19th century. There are three main floors with a total of 40 gallery rooms, so this is enough to keep you busy here for one or two hours. The ground floor is all sculpture, which reaches from the ancient world up until the 19th century. Predominantly colored religious sculpture, but also some ancient Roman and Greek pieces here as well. State of preservation of the Gothic wood sculptures is really quite remarkable, considering they're about 700 years old. Down a few steps to a lower gallery that has got dozens of these capitals, tops of columns from the Middle Ages, primarily 13th century. All around you'll find statues carved in stone and columns and fragments of Gothic buildings. There are a number of large stone tombs and sarcophagi here with sculptural ornamentation. With some large pieces of Gothic architecture, it's almost like you're walking through an ancient building. In fact, the museum is in a building that's dating from the 15th century. Upstairs, it's nearly all religious art from the Gothic period right up on through the Renaissance and the Baroque. The museum was founded back in 1944 by Frederick Marez, who was a sculptor also. And he had acquired a big collection that he wanted to donate to the city of Barcelona. He lived until 1991, passing at the age of 99. He assembled one of the most important collections of Spanish sculpture from the 12th to the 19th century, including some really spectacular pieces. Let's conclude the segment with some more of that song and dance performance in the courtyard of the Royal Palace next door. movies about Barcelona in our collection, including a look at the Picasso Museum. We upload a new movie every week, so please subscribe to our channel and be sure to click that little alarm bell. Then you'll be notified. And if you enjoyed the movie, how about a thumbs up and we always welcome comments down below. Thank you.